Introducing the Soul Collection by Brilliant Earth, the global leader in ethically sourced fine jewelry. From pave rings to star-studded bracelets, each piece made with recycled gold or silver and beyond conflict-free diamonds, embodies Brilliant Earth's commitment to design, craftsmanship, quality, sustainability, and transparency. Drawing inspiration from the warmth and energy of the sun, soul is more than jewelry. It's an expression of your personality. The Soul Collection, exclusively at Brilliant Earth. Be light, be you. Are you struggling to conceive? You have options, and at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group, we'll make sure you have the guidance and support you need. Preg is known for individualized fertility care that's unique to every patient. We take the time to provide a reassuring and empowering experience because we believe that you deserve nothing less. Let us help you on your journey to parenthood. Visit us at pregonline.com to learn more. Get the guidance and support you need at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group. If you really like this episode, please support our podcast by going to patreon.com slash true crime wives and get lots of great extras. Good Wives Guide to True Crime. We discuss crimes that some may find disturbing. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome back, listeners. Tonight we are concluding our discussion on Jody Arias and the murder of Travis Alexander. We're going to finish breaking down what happened during Jody's murder trial, the verdict, and sentencing. Our next episode will be the bonus interview with Kirk Nurmi, who you've seen before, and you don't want to miss it. If you think that nothing about this case could shock you at this point, well, you're in for a couple of surprises. <laughs> Tears from Jody Arias. She broke down on the stand as the first photo of Travis Alexander's body was displayed in court. It showed him twisted and crumpled on the shower floor. Ma'am, were you crying when you were shooting him? I don't remember. Were you crying when you were stabbing him? I don't remember. How about when you cut his throat? Were you crying then? I don't know. With her face in her hands, the prosecutor dared her to look. Take a look then. And you're the one that did this, right? Yes. And you're the same individual that lied about all this, right? Yes. Well, so then take a look at it. <laughs> hey folks, it's time to grab your glass of wine because good wives Fancy, Tori, Colleen, and Christina are about to serve up another true crime case. We ended last week's episode with Jody Arias being called to take the stand, which isn't something that we usually see. Jody was facing the death penalty for the premeditated murder of Travis Alexander, and she had changed her story several times by now. The world was watching, people had come from all over the country in hope of getting a seat inside the courtroom, and Jody Arias was about to testify in her own defense. Big mistake. Huge. Huge. Right. Big there's mistake. a reason. There's a reason that defendants do not get up on the stand because usually they cannot keep their mouth shut. They usually say things that they shouldn't say. That their lawyers are like, "Please don't say it. Please don't say it. Please, 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 just keep your mouth shut and don't answer that question and say you don't remember. Say anything but I was there and yeah, that may be my fingerprint, but it was at a different time. Say something. I'm sure, Kirk was like, "Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it." And she was like, "I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I want to do it. I want to oh, do yeah. it." Attention. I think this made it so exciting for people, like all these people that were waiting, you know, waiting to see, like you said, this is something we normally don't see. So with all this scandal that was involved with this trial to know that, wow, she's about to take the stand. I think everybody was, it was just a mixture of like excitement because it's something you don't normally see. And then it was just that anticipation of what the hell is she going to say? Right. Right. I just, I, I mean, and, and of course, she didn't disappoint. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I mean, I just, you can't, you can't write this stuff. It's like this woman was just insane. Uh, just, I don't know. Craziness. Crazy, crazy, craziness. Well, I mean, right. I think the only other time I've seen uh, one other probably person get on the stand and actually it go well for them, Robert <laughs> Durst. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Durst. You know, like that's about Durst. that's about it. <laughs> Durst. Yeah, Durst. Well, I mean, but I guess it. I think I'm pretty sure Dahmer got up on the stand, but Dahmer was like, "Please, thank you for arresting me. I didn't want to do it anymore. Thank you, thank you. I will tell you whatever you want, and I'm sorry. You, you, 
your family, yes, please yell at me. I deserve to be yelled at. I think that was a plea agreement, though. Like, it, it, he probably just said he'd plead to whatever, and and they said, okay, you know, whatever. We won't give you the whatever, whatever, you know. It's for I mean, he's he was at least like realistic about it, not like Jody mm-hmm. getting up on the stand to spew bull and thinking crap. that she was right, thinking that she could wiggle her way out of this shit like she'd done all her life, you know? So Yeah, and you're not talking about just taking the stand and making a confession or saying, Well, you know, I did this in self defense. You're talking about eighteen days, days. of Jody eight, on the What stand. on the world could she have literally talked about for eighteen effing days? Never some trials don't even some trials don't even don't last that exactly, long. Exactly, exactly. I that just, was just her testimony. Eighteen days. What in the hell was this chick talking about? I didn't she, watch it. I'll be honest, and I don't think I could sit through eighteen days. I would. If I had been a juror, I would have barfed right there. I would just be like, Bleh. I can't listen to this anymore. <laughs> Please take me to the hospital. Alternate juror, come on, come up here, because I can't, I can't do this anymore. But it's not like it's such a like sensationalized. Like I'm, you are giving me detail by detail of everything you did and why and X Y Z. No, this is just her spewing crap for eighteen days. For eighteen days. <laughs> it's much. not, you know, going through a detailed plot of murdering thirty people over six years and you know, right, a, right, make her trials that that long. And even then, those trials sometimes aren't even that long. Like, this yeah. is just one murder, and, I mean, every murder is tragic and horrifying, especially... Right, for- absolutely, but, I mean, but still... Like, one like, murder, and she just spews garbage. Can you imagine what his poor family was feeling, sitting in the gallery, having oh. to listen to that dumb bitch talk for 18 days? That's awful. Oh, uh, I don't know. I'm surprised one of them didn't bring a gun and shoot her. Serious to God. Yeah, that would, that would, that would be just, a situation you could actually understand. I would have been yeah. making a plastic gun, you know, like Jesus. Right, 3D print the gun and be like, okay, this this is it. It's plastic. You don't see it. Right? Like 3D print some shit and make it, bring it in there. Oh, God. Anyway. <laughs> well, guys, we've got the last of this episode to get through today. Uh, we're going to wrap up Jody, and then, you know, you know what's coming next. So you guys are going to want to Tune back in after this one. Don't go anywhere. The Good Wives will be right back. If you've been listening to our podcast for some time, then you've probably noticed that there's been some different changes going on. And that's because we've recently switched over to our new hosting platform using Buzzsprout. And we love it. It could not have been a smoother transition. Buzzsprout has made it super simple and gave us amazing features we weren't getting before. So if you've been thinking of hosting a podcast or you're looking for a new host, then we totally recommend giving Buzzsprout a try. Buzzsprout is hands down the easiest and best way to launch, promote, and track your podcast. Your show can be online and listed in all the major podcast directories like Apple, Spotify, Google, and even Pandora within minutes of finishing your recording. So join over 100,000 podcasters already using Buzzsprout to get their message out to the world. And if you follow the link in the show notes, that lets Buzzsprout know we sent you. And it helps you get a $20 Amazon gift card if you sign up for a paid plan. And it helps support our show. every episode, we like to serve up a special dish from the state that our crime takes place. So here's our resident Cajun Mama Thai to tell you what our true crime dish of the week is. It's me, Cajun Mama Ty. I have Kenny G playing in the background. He is just absolutely awesome. The man can play any instrument. Any instrument you could probably hand to him, he could play. So he's one of my favorite. I just love listening. Very relaxing music. So while I'm talking to you guys about our recipe today... I have him playing in the background. So today we are going to do a quick and easy 
um, salad recipe. It's a very colorful salad. It has an awesome sweet and savory lime dressing that goes along with it. And the prep time, cook time is 25 minutes. So it's quick and easy. And it is black bean and corn salad. So uh, let's head back to the good wives as they wrapping up the Jody Arias case and continue on. And I'll be back later with the recipe. And don't forget to listen to our French word also. Y'all have a good day. See you in a little bit. So it's February 4th, 2013, and Jody Arias has just been called to the stand. Her hair was dark brown, and on her first day of testimony, she was wearing these black wireframe glasses, beige pants, and a black short sleeve shirt. To me, she looked really frail. Like, I didn't see this sex bomb. So for all those yeah. blonde bombshell photos that we saw... The Jody that took the stand had more of a plain Jane girl next door kind of look. You wouldn't have looked twice at her walking down the street. So I think that's what she was definitely going for. Yes, it was a total a, a total mm -hmm. change in everything from what we saw in those photos where she was using her looks. With, with in court, it seemed as if she was downplaying her looks as much as she could. Right to show right. up as you know the girl next door as I'm you know I'm a librarian I'm not sexy I'm intelligent I'm smart and I'm serious and please pay attention to only the words that are coming out of my mouth not the pictures of me looking like a whore. <laughs> Basically, so Nermi begins his questioning by asking Jody if she killed Travis and she replied that she had and she gave the explanation that Travis had attacked her and she had to defend herself. And then the attempt to malign Travis's character begins. So through much of her 18 days of testimony, Jody appeared to be embarrassed by the details that were being shared. She would, you know, she would look down. She wouldn't make eye contact with anybody in the jury. And she testified to a lot of different things about Travis. And one of the things they asked her about was her baptism ceremony. And at this point, Jody testified that Travis had anal sex with her right after her baptism ceremony. And she said that she couldn't say that she wanted it to happen, but she also didn't stop it when Travis initiated it. Ugh. I mean, the thing is, like, when it comes to, like, embarrassing details, you know, sex and then potential, you know, porn and, you know, pedophilia... Like, as much as, yeah, it's uncomfortable to talk about it, when you have actual facts on things, you're usually, you know, pretty candid about what's happening and be like, yeah, you know, we did have sex. We, it was just after my baptism, you know, I, he wanted me to be this good Mormon girl, but then, you know, he really wanted to have kind of more rough sex and he wanted to, you know, do anal and I didn't really want it to happen, but I love him and we, would, we just did it anyway. Like, you're just, you know... When it's the truth, it, even if it's uncomfortable, you at least say it. You know, you're not shuffling your feet and looking down like, oh, well, he, he wanted to do it. And I, I mean, I didn't stop him from doing it and, you know, blushing and stuff. Like it's, you know, if you're honest, it, it, you, don't, you just say it, you know? That yeah, and sense. considering she knew what was coming, you know, going further, she knew what was going to come out. So the whole little act of the embarrassment, like you're embarrassed now, really? Oh, right. Like you took naked pictures of him in the shower. You crawled into his bed. We all know, you know, your details beforehand. Like mm -hmm. we already heard this. And to try to play it off like that it was uncomfortable for you. Like his family and friends are in the audience listening to you and they know what the truth is and why you're, you weren't his girlfriend anymore. Like you're saying you're uncomfortable to say it because you know, it's a lie. Exactly. Exactly. And seeing his siblings in the gallery during her testimony, you, you could see the range of emotions between like the heartbreak, the rage, because I, I felt the anger coming from them and I couldn't blame them at all. I wanted to choke Jody during, during her testimony. So I can't even imagine what it was for them sitting there. Well, and then, um, so Jody is testifying about uh, Travis being emotionally, mentally, and physically abusive to her, even though everybody knows that that was not the case. Even if he wasn't a great guy, those things were just out of character for him. And she said that there were times their relationship was very unhealthy, and she didn't think that they should continue with it. 
And she had told instances of when Travis had hurt her physically. And this part bothers me, I think, one of the most is when these accusations are made. Is one of the worst accusations she did make was that she had walked in on Travis uh, when he was masturbating to child pornography. And the entire courtroom was shocked by the accusation that Travis was a pedophile. What a piece of shit. What a piece and of shit. It, because, you know, the thing is when people make those kind of accusations, not only is it hard to believe, especially for, you know, somebody's character, but also if he was watching child pornography on his computer, or his phone, or any device, guess who would have found it? The police. Right. The FBI. Right. The, they have those things right. monitored. You know, I talked about it with the uh, guy from Glee. Like, they have that shit on lockdown. They are being watched all the time. And, you know, they would have found that if that was the case. And it would have been something that prosecution would have brought up on their end to make, you know, be like, yes, he did have this, but that was from four years ago. You know, they would have brought it up. So that way the defense couldn't have used it as a ploy. Right, right, exactly. But, you know, this to me, just it's, it just, everything that I'm reading that is between them, that, that, that she's calling, you know, these terrible times that he was degrading, she was into it, and she was responding back and being like, oh, you're so bad. Oh, it just makes me so hot. They were just sexting. Literally, it's sexting. You know, and, and, and she, now she's going to talk about, you know, him calling her the ultimate slut in bed, you know, and be like, oh, that's just so terrible. It was just so degrading. <laughs> oh, shut the hell up. You, you thought it. that was funny. And I'm not saying that every woman that's, you know, has to, that goes through that is, is, is compliant, you know, but she was participating in it. She enjoyed it. It was a fun thing for them. Not like, oh my God, he's calling me these horrible, awful names, you know, because he hates me or, you know, he's such a terrible fucking person. So oh. we'll, we'll talk about the sex tape a little bit later, but there's actually a point in their sex tape where he says something to her and she responds, that's so debasing. I like it. Right. And I'm like, come on, you know, it's one thing to not say no. It's a completely other thing that you appear to enjoy every minute of this. Right. right. And so, so the defense, tape. right. So the defense goes ahead and they do, they shock everyone further when they play the audio from a sex take of Travis and Jody that was recorded on May 10th, 2008, just a few weeks before Jody murders Travis. They were having phone sex, and among other things, Travis told Jody that he wanted to tie her to a tree and have sex with her, and Jody seemed to enjoy every aspect of the call. The graphic recording was the defense's way of showing that Travis wasn't the good religious man everyone thought he was. It was used to portray Travis as aggressive and sexually deviant. I don't give a shit, so it still doesn't give you a right to kill him. Well, right. And I, again, we all have our own, you know, personal sex life. You know, all of us have something that is not seemly. You know, we're not wholesome Catholics sleeping in different, you know, beds from our partner unless we're trying to bake a baby. Like, we all have something that somebody out there is going to think that it's, you know, deviant behavior. And I mean, they yeah. definitely had a toxic relationship. Nobody is saying that their relationship was great. It was absolutely toxic. These are two people that should not have been together. But we all know people who have been in toxic relationships and not one of them that I know have ended up brutally murdered or on trial for a brutal murder. Nope. No, I mean, exactly. So, but when we get to the part of the toast, test, toastimony, toastimony. <laughs> When we get to the part of the testimony where Jody tells her version of what led up to the murder, she says that she, while she was taking pictures of Travis, you know, she had the camera and it slips out, it falls down, you know, it falls on the floor. And then she said, Travis began flipping out on her. He body slams her onto the floor and started berating her for dropping the camera. And she goes on to further testify that she ran from Travis and started and hid in his closet. And when she conveniently remembers, oh, he has a gun hidden in here. So she claims to run out of the closet into Travis and she, and he was still chasing her. So she pointed the gun at him and she lun and then Travis lunged at her again and the gun went off. So Jody breaks down crying. She testifies that there is a lot she doesn't remember, including stabbing Travis or dragging the body across the floor. Oh, oh give me a break. Give me a break. Well, and like if that story isn't even, you know, remotely related, because we've seen that, um, based on the autopsy report that Travis had defensive wounds and stab wounds as defensive wounds before the gun was played. So she had been trying to attack him with the knife bef 
before the gunshot because the gunshot to his head would have rendered him uh, incapacitated and unable to move. So we know that that story is already a lie. And from the lies she's already told, she had said that, oh, well, she hid in a closet from uh, intruders, not, you know, from Travis. So it's, and it's her camera. Why is Travis screaming and yelling at her for dropping her own camera? Just, oh, no, this, this was Travis's. It was a new camera that he had gotten. For his trip to Cancun, probably. Uh, yeah. I, would think, I, just, yeah. I, I don't know. This, she's just, it, oh, she just infuriates me. Oh. So now on day eight of Jody's testimony, Juan Martinez comes at Jody hard during his cross-examination, asking her if she was crying while she was stabbing Travis. Jody keeps saying that she doesn't remember, she claims that she went into some kind of fog where she can't remember any of the many things she did after shooting Travis. And like I already said, it's complete bullshit because she, she stabbed him before the shooting. And when Martinez asks her about the memory problems, she takes a dig at him, idiot, don't ever dig at the prosecutor, and says that those problems usually happen when a man like Martinez or Travis yell at her. I mean, this, was, this was one part that particularly pissed me off. Like, dude, we all have seen cross-examinations of everyone and anyone, and your lawyer told you, I guarantee you, that Martinez is going to go hard at you, so you just shut the hell up, you dummy, by saying this crap. Like, what did she think that was going to accomplish? Like, oh, poor me. I'm just so upset because the prosecutor is yelling at me. Like, really? Get the hell out of here. Right, like, it's just, it's complete, you know, debasing of this prosecutor. Like, this prosecutor is a long-time prosecutor, prosecuted many cases, and be like, well, you know, when a man yells at me, I really just break down and I get foggy. My memory. I'm so oh, stupid. Right. That's, that's you know? what you're trying to describe as PTSD, and that is not the same. Um, Fake PTSD bothers me, too. Yes. Because yes. people do, like... We, I think, depending on what you've been through in your life, a lot of people do suffer from traumatic memories and PTSD. I know I do from uh, a lot of my medical procedures and the feeding tubes. Like, it's in my sure. um, it's in my power of attorney that I refuse to have a feeding tube um, if I am rendered incapacitated. And I'm probably one of the only people in the country under the age of 26 who has no feeding tubes in their power of attorney and will. Um, and so... Like, we all have PTSD, whether, you know, military or abusive situations from family or exes or from car accidents, medical issues. There's a number of things that people can have PTSD for. And when people fake PTSD for their own benefit, it really, really just irks me, grinds my gears, pisses me off, because you're mocking, essentially, somebody who actually is suffering from PTSD and using it for your own advantage when you're just trying to seek the benefits of being labeled as somebody dealing with a traumatic situation. Not that you actually did and need help for that situation because it didn't happen to you. There's not yeah, enough help for people to people who have PTSD actually. Like there's not enough right. support and you're just right. taking advantage of that situation. Yeah. Like it just, and then she goes on, you know, they, they bring her journal entries into evidence and, you know, Juan Martinez says, well, there's no mention of any type of abuse by Travis, only declarations of, you know, love for him. And then she claims, and this, oh, this makes me, oh God, there's so many oh, things yeah. that she's, there's so many things that she says that piss me off that I'm just, ah, but then she claims she didn't write about the abuse because she believes in the laws of attraction. And the law of attraction is the belief that positive or negative thoughts bring positive or negative experiences into a person's life. Now, I deal in law of attraction all the time. That is something that I have been following and doing for for a long time. And, um, I, you know, I truly do believe in the power of law of attraction and that, you know, you can manifest things in, in your life to go, you know, a better way if you're positive, you know, positive thinking, because it's not just like, oh, I positively thought and something came to me. No, it's because when you're positively thinking, then you do positive things. And so it continues to be like a circular thing. But this, this pisses me off. Oh, I wrote all about how much I love the man who's abusing me. Okay, I can understand not writing crappy things in your journal, but then why would you write anything else in there? You wouldn't write anything in there about him because you would be so scared of him. Right. 
Home is a place to laugh, learn, and play, and a place where everyone should always feel safe. That's why at Kida, we believe that protecting children from house fires is everyone's cause. This Fire Safety Month, join us in our mission to help families everywhere learn about fire safety so we can help keep children safe at home and ensure lots more laughs in the future. Learn about the importance of smoke alarms and creating your own home fire safety plan at causeforalarm.org. It's time for some new azaleas. Perfect Mundo azaleas from proven winners color choice shrubs. These innovative new azaleas bloom longer and brighter than the rest, giving you months of flowers in spring and in fall. Take your pick from 10 different colors, shapes, and sizes. All have been trialed and tested to ensure your success and satisfaction. Look for Perfect Mundo azaleas from proven winners color choice shrubs in the distinctive white containers at your local garden center. Yummy. Ah. <laughs> yeah, even the even one of the journal entries that they read in court was such bullshit. It was like, I'm so glad that this is for my eyes only because today I'm going to say that I, Jody Arias, love Travis Victor Alexander so much that blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, oh yeah. Gag me. Gag me with a spoon. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> This, this case, I, I think this case is one that has just annoyed the shit out of me. Like, a lot of cases I get mad at or, you know, like with Gypsy Rose Blanchard, we went through a lot of trauma dealing with that case and, and, and just, it was just heartbreak and it was such a nutty case. And, you know, all the cases that we cover have some element of just total what the hell is going on, you know. But this one, I, I just feel annoyed all the time. Like, I... Christina and I were talking about it the other day and she's like, I think I've had my fill of Jodi Arias. I like, I don't ever want to talk about her ever again, you know, like seriously. And I feel the same way because she's just, it's just so effing mind boggling, which makes me extremely annoyed. Like at everything and anything that she does. Like I was listening to her freaking sing, you know, the silent or the old holy night thing in our last episode. And I was like, yeah. ah, and, I, and it wasn't that she sounded terrible, but it just was like, oh, this is fucking annoying. This is annoying. It's, no, it's nauseating. Yeah, nauseating. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, she's, yeah. she's, to me, one of the things that I find so annoying about her is she's boring. Like, mm-hmm. and even with cases like Casey Anthony, one of the most hated women in the world, the way the case led up to what happened, when you go back and look at it, it's, it's interesting. She, she had something going on in her head for a while. This wasn't something that happened overnight. With right. Jody, even with, with that, it's just like, okay, so you were a jealous bitch. You were mad that he was moving on with his life and you did the all, oh, okay, if if you're not going to have me, then I'm going to make sure no one has you. And, right, and then I'm just going to be totally bizarre afterwards. Afterwards, right? like, yes. Yeah, like, like I, but, but then again, you know, you look at it and you're like, okay, cl- climbing in windows and doggy doors is not normal behavior. So, <laughs> I mean, hey, like, it, no wonder, okay, I guess that, that I can get her standing on her head and freaking singing, oh, holy night while being arrested. I totally understand her asking for, you know, makeup before she goes and takes her mug shot, even though I think that's absolutely absurd. Like, are you serious? You shallow freaking bitch. But, you know, I'm sorry. And you know what? I, I, that's, what that's what I think of her. I just think she's a shallow bitch. And I just, oh, sociopathic shallow bitch. That, that's what she is. That's what she is. Yes. <laughs> right. There, I mean, there's not like really any denying that that's exactly no. who, who and what she is. I find it extremely annoying. The whole story annoys the crap out of me. I think this is why I didn't follow it in the first place because I was just uber annoyed by this girl who they kept calling strikingly beautiful. And I was like, I don't see it. I don't see it. Well, the thing is, it's like her yeah. lies were just de- like just debasing and stupid, pointless lies that anybody could have come up with. Like, and again, we'll always probably make the comparison. Like, Casey Anthony's lies were at least interesting. I mean, there was a missing toddler and, you know, she's claiming she works at Universal and she doesn't. She's leading cops down dead end hallways. You know, she's taking him to Zanny the Nanny's house. Like, you know, that doesn't exist. Right, she's, she's Zanny the Nanny. She had the roommates' names, the roommates' love lives, their careers, their family members, where they were from. They have family right. in New York. Like, Casey Anthony had a freaking story. Well, right, right. and like, 
we the kid was missing for a long time so it was like well and she's pretty convincing at the line so do what tell me more and there were so many twists and turns where you want to watch what casey anthony's gonna say next the crazy pants whereas jody arias is like oh he was was abusive but he watched porn but also i really enjoyed him debasing me and uh, making these very sexual videos and comments with me but he broke up with me and I moved closer to him, single white female. And then like, I moved back to my hometown. And so, um, you know, but I still kept going cause he was still abusive. Like, no, no, you're just a lying. Right. She's a, she's a boring liar. <laughs> yes. Yes. Like the Vallow case. Okay. Lori, Lori Vallow has lied 95 ways from Sunday, man. But dude, every freaking lie she has told is really freaking interesting. Like, what is this woman going to come up with next? Like, you know, the world is ending on July 21st, 22nd, 2020, and everybody is going to be zombies. Let's kill people. Like, that's interesting. Not, oh, he was, he was like totally rude in these sex messages that we, we sit back and forth. And so I killed him. <laughs> no, no. You know how you don't be, you don't, you know how you don't be abused in that situation? Stop going over there and crawling through his doggy door, you dumbo. Well, right, that's the thing, is, like, she, he broke up with her, she moves away, but yet she still sneaks, like, if he's abusing you, and he has let you go, 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 be free, you crazy lady. Oh, Colleen, the first thing is, is that he broke up with her, and she moved closer to him. Well, right, yeah, but, like, you, you're showing up at his house, you're sneaking in his windows, you're crawling through the doggy door, you're laying on his bed naked, like, he has let you go. You go be free. If he was abusing right. you and he has let you go and he's not stalking you, go live your life, girl. Haven't go you live your heard, life. Haven't she ever heard of if you know if you love something, you'll set it free if it comes back to you, it was meant to be? Like Jesus, that doesn't mean crawl through his damn doggy door, bitch. <laughs> like seriously. Right. Oh he hasn't my God. come to you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know I've used a lot of <laughs> a lot of Wow, I just, I, she just infuriates me. Like, I just, uh So anyway, Martinez questions Jody further about Travis's autopsy and the injuries she inflicted on him. And so on all the other days that Jody testified, there were times she kept her eyes down or looked embarrassed. But for the most part, she was calm and she held it together. But during this line of questioning, she loses her cool demeanor I'm sorry, cool demeanor, and she cracks, and she begins to cry, and she covers her face, which I don't believe she was crying. I believe she was covering her face so she could pretend she was crying. <laughs> I want to see the tears, ma'am. Where are the tears? I want to see the tears. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, it was it was weird because she she went, I mean, she went head to head with Martinez for most of those days, and there were times personally I would have probably broke down crying with him because he he is he's not an easy person to have questioning you like he's no. known to be really really hard on witnesses. Yeah, so he's I would, brutal. I would have probably been hysterical on that first day, and I wouldn't have been able to testify anymore. But yeah, she not eight, not eighteen days for a while. Yeah, yeah, not eighteen days. I couldn't have gone eighteen days with that man. Like seriously, oh, no. and I and I, you know, I run circles around for her for being, you know, very very steely. You know, I'm I'm a stealthy person. I can deal with a lot of shit. You know, but uh, she, man, if he had gone at her me like he went at her, I, I you're right. I would have broke down Fold. absolutely. Fold. You know, Start spilling the truth. Yeah, like there's no way. I and there's no way when he's sitting there saying all these things and and you know he or she's going back at him going, "Well, you know, do you da 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 da?" cuz she was like turning the questions back on him, you know, and I I was like, "Oh my god. <laughs> she did not do just do that." Like, "Oh, wow. Wow. All right. Well, you know, the trial went on for several months, and there were a lot of different witnesses that testified. On March 14, 2013, an expert for the defense testified that Jody suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder and amnesia. But Martinez questioned the entire evaluation because at the time she was evaluated, Jody was still claiming that she hadn't killed Travis. Then Ryan Burns was a witness for the prosecution. He testified that the day after Travis was murdered, Jody was at his house and the two of them made out. And he also testified about the cuts that Jody had on her fingers when she came to visit him. See, so she has, so she has sex with Travis, then kills him and then runs off to this other guy's house and starts in with him. Like, ugh. 
right? You have such PTSD and amnesia. Like, I'm right. so- no, 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 no. Oh, how did I get here? I don't remember driving here after I killed him. Oh. Right, and like to go through that psych evaluation when you're still denying, you know, the claims. Like, mm-hmm. uh, no, no. Because right now you're saying you didn't do it, but now in court you're admitting that, yeah, you did it, but, and uh, it bothers me. But right, she goes to this other dude's house the next day. You know, I, I just wonder, do you guys think that maybe the lies was like her version of thinking if I keep changing my story that they'll think that I w- I'm like, I wasn't in my right mind and I, w- I, I really thought these things happened. Like, do you think that that, that was something that was going on? Like, no, I I'm, think trying she- fig- I'm trying to figure out like her mindset because I just, it just I doesn't she- make any sense. I think she thought she was a good enough liar to get away with it because it's not, you know, her lies aren't, you know, like insanity defense lies. Like Leticia Stauk, her lies going for insanity defense make more sense than what Jody is. Sure. Sure. Lori Vallow's too, as in there's right. zombies that I'm killing zombies. I, I don't know. I'm just killing zombies. Right. No, like the lies Jody is saying are, you know, oh, well, I don't remember going to the new boy's house and making out with him, but I still killed him. Right, but but oh, I don't thinking- remember. I'm just thinking, like, you know, the switching of the story, I'm wondering if that was what she thought was a strategy. <laughs> like, if I do that, and I just take telling different stories of the same story, like, oh, no, I don't remember anything. I didn't do it. Da, 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 da. Oh, I, I can't believe this. Oh, wait, it was intruders. Oh, wait, he attacked me, and, and I did it out of, out of fear. Oh, wait, no, no, it's because he was abusive, and, and uh, you know, like, I wonder if that's what was going through her head. Like, if I just confuse them enough, maybe they'll just think I'm insane. I don't, I don't know. I just think she thought she was a better liar. Yeah, I think I think she thought that she'd be able to walk away from the original questioning with uh, Detective Flores. Right. And then when she couldn't, she had a little bit of time to think that night mm-hmm. when she was arrested. And I think she said, right. fuck, they know I was there. There's nothing I can do to make it that I wasn't there. So I have to admit to being there. But what story can I give so that I'm still innocent in this? And that's where her mm-hmm. intruder home invasion story came in. And Mm -hmm. I think she just changed it as she had more time to think and try to come up with something that in her mind was a more valid story than the last one. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I'm just trying to figure it out because it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Like, I don't understand people that do that. Like, if you're going to tell a story and you know you did something, the best thing you would do is get the most believable story out there. You're not going to, denying it and knowing that you were there and that you committed a crime, that doesn't seem logical because you're like, shit, if they have me, if they brought me in here and they're questioning me, uh, that means I, I did leave something behind at the scene. So why was I there? Let me think of a reason why I was actually there, you know, and and try to explain it that way. Like that to me is is... I, I just don't understand the thought process like that. I guess that's just me. I don't know why the hell she came up with all these different weird things. Um, I can understand Casey Anthony's lies better than this lady's lies. Like, I just I just don't get it. I, I don't know. But anyway, so one of the other testimonies was given by Alice Dunn LaViolette. And she's a psychotherapist and defense witness testifying that Arius suffered from battered women's syndrome while oh. clinical psychologist Janine DeMarte another prosecution witness testified that Jody Arias was not a battered woman you got to how did this dumbo come up with the idea that this girl is battered woman syndrome seriously i mean are you, you really- are, are you completely you must be a terrible doctor i would never want to go to that woman well it's just it's such crap like i don't know what lies jody was spinning to her but there's never a police report. There's never any photos of bruises. He had, he had roommates. Don't you think there would have been some sort of thing that happened if he was abusing her? Like, seriously? I mean, I understand they can't smell, but they sure as shit can hear. Well, and the way jo- Jody is known to be taking photos and videos. If she was being right. abused, they would have, she would have taken photos of it. Yes, she would have taken photos of every bruise. Oh, look, today he gave me a rug burn. Oh, today I have a black eye. You know, I mean, seriously. No way. No way. 
battered women syndrome. That pisses me off too, because women that actually go through this shit have a really hard time even getting people to listen to them. Right, and believe and then, themselves. Right, and believe them, right. And and many of them end up dead at the, at the hands of their attackers, you know, their abusers. And this stupid bimbo is freaking claiming that shit. Oh! Yeah, no, it's, it's crap. <laughs> And I'm so sorry, guys. I just, <laughs> this infuriates me. Well, and then continuing on, you know, there's an expert for the prosecution who's testified that Jody Harris had borderline personality disorder, but the defense countered with the testimony from the psychologist, Dr. Robert Geffner. And so I, this was a weird thing for me. Like, why is the prosecution helping Jody? And then why is the defense not accepting the help from the prosecution on this defense argument? <clears throat> like, you're just, you're giving the, def- like, no offense, Kirk, but like, they were like, yeah, she, ha- yeah, Jody may have borderline personality disorder. Why not be like, yeah, she definitely does. And that contributed to her mental state at the time. Not, no, she doesn't. <laughs> I, just, no. I just can't. I just <laughs> she can't. was in her right I mind. Just can't. <laughs> just can't. Can't. So Jody's mom, Sandy, testifies. And she was questioned about accusations that Jody had made about childhood abuse. Now, I don't know what happened. Christina, did, I mean, you looked at the, you, you were the one looking at this. So did her mother testify that there actually was childhood abuse? No, no. Jody no. had a perfectly normal childhood. Uh, as a matter of fact, there were some allegations that, that when Jody was going through her rebellious stage, she had actually slapped her mom at one point. Ah, right, 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 which right. Which I couldn't completely believe. I totally can believe it. Yes. I didn't totally believe it. Absolutely. But this is something that's interesting, and I did not know this. I didn't even know this was a possibility of things that could happen in a, in a trial. So in Arizona, jurors are allowed to submit questions that they want a defendant to answer. So during the month of March, jurors submitted over two hundred questions that they wanted answered by Jody. Some were serious questions and others were not so much. Like, how do you remember so many sexual encounters, but don't remember stabbing Travis and dragging his body? And how do you determine when you will tell the truth and when you will not tell the truth? Oh my God. That's fascinating. I, that is fascinating. I I want to look into that some more and maybe discuss that on uh, yes, Murder by really, Design. It's a controversial thing. I didn't really know about it either. And from what I'm, what I'm reading, it's, it's pretty controversial because some people feel like, okay, well, it's good because the jurors, they want to get more of an understanding and that right. will help them come to a decision. And then other people see questions like this and it's like no they're not trying to get an understanding this is a way for them to say shit that they can't say otherwise to the defendant so is it really a good idea to let them but i think i actually do think i mean i'm surprised a lot of these questions got through that the judge actually let them through but right i think it right. could be a good a good tool for a jury to give them some more understanding on things yeah i def- i definitely think so i mean we've talked about you know how jur- jur- you know professional juries or or more understanding of you know the laws that ju- the jurors are having to decide things on and and these things you know we we have talked about that sometimes you know and how we believe that you know that jurors need to be extremely more educated Educated, and I think this is a step towards that of, of you know, and they don't, and, and I can understand maybe if they don't, you know, if the defendant doesn't want to answer it, they don't have to take the stand or they don't have to answer. But, you know, having these questions like that come through and having a judge decide, okay, yeah, those are relevant questions or whatever. I, I, I think that might be a good thing. I mean, I can understand why the defense might not want it because of, you know, um, they have to put on, the, the prosecution has to put all the, you know, the evidence yeah, out there. there. Yeah, yeah, everything. It's on them to prove. So then by asking their defendants questions, then it, then that's taking away the burden of proof from the def- from the prosecution side, maybe. But I really think this is an interesting concept and something that I want to really explore some more. Maybe we'll talk about it over on Murder by Design. <clears throat> right, I'd definitely like yeah. to talk about that, especially I when think we we'll ask about we, these cases. I think with Jody, yeah. in Jody's case, I think she worked with a psychotherapist who basically mm-hmm. then took the stand and fielded the questions and answered the questions on behalf of her. You gotta be kidding me. 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how how it works. Well, I'm gonna ask Kirk about this actual like thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask him about it because you know I mean who better would know about right. it? Right. He was like, exactly. I, we had to f and answer these questions that were yeah. posed to us. Right. <laughs> well, I'm gonna ask in Arizona. So I guess right. So yeah. I'm gonna ask him about it in general. Like, how does that work? And what do you think about it? Let's. I, I think we definitely should have him talk about that on a show one day. That's well. I think we should ask um, Carlos too how he feels about that, considering he is on the prosecution side and. It might take off some of that burden of proof on his end if, yeah, because then yeah. it's the thing is when, and we'll talk about it again more in depth on our murder by design, but when you're bringing up evidence, you know, it has to be relevant evidence. And so right. you have to tell the story, you know, in order of succession and make it relevant. Cause if you just be like, I want to submit this document and be like, well, relevance, why? Like, right. and, and so if a juror asks that question, like, Hey, well, what was she doing in July of last year? You know, were, was there any evidence that, you know, Travis was abusing her or something? And then they're like, oh, no, in fact, here in July of last year is a video that they made of a sex tape. Right. Like, right, like I couldn't right. introduce this before, but you just introduced it. And okay, I get so to- thank you. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. Yeah, right, right. So. <laughs> um, so as the days went by, more and more people were watching. And I think Jody's testimony had a lot to do with that. I mean, she's talking for days. Um, and a defendant taking... <laughs> the defendant I'm, still, taking- I'm still hung up on that. I'm sorry. I'm still hung up on 18 days. It's a long-ass time. It's a long-ass time for a defendant to be on the stand for any reason whatsoever. That's a whole month. Yeah! That's a whole month, because we're not going, you know, <laughs> Monday through Sunday. This is Monday through Friday. Friday, and she's on there for 18 days. Holy That's crap, a, a That's month of listening to Jody. Three talk. weeks and two, and, and you know, three weeks and three days. Like, oh my god, like, Kirk, I am so sorry. I would have shot myself in the head. That's it. I couldn't. Kirk, we we totally get why you want it out. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> like, oh god. And oh. so, like we've said, a defendant taking the stand is not something that we see a lot, but it is something that we do want because we get to hear from them. Um, and in a case like this, with all of the controversy about sex and religion, Jody taking the stand was a huge and made people more interested to see how it would all end. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I don't know. Like, it would have been like one of those things where it would have been a train wreck, like, you know, that you wouldn't have been able to look away even if you wanted to look away. Like, yes. oh, I don't want to hear it. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it where you're covering your eyes, you know, in, in a horror movie, but yet you've got one eye where it's like looking, you know, like, <laughs> oh, no, 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 yeah. I don't want to see it. <laughs> I think for most people watching, it's kind of like the opposite. So you you get into the watching this trial and in the beginning, it's like, okay, I got to see what the lawyers are going to say and then the experts start taking the stand and it's like oh god this is boring I don't understand half of what they're saying right and I think most people tend to like wean off after a while like oh, I'm not gonna watch it anymore I'll check in and find out what the verdict is later sure but in this case it was the total opposite Jody taking mm-hmm. that stand it was like once that went around like she's on the stand it's 18 days of her on the stand and I think that <laughs> every day when people heard like wait she was on the stand yesterday oh yeah she's She's back on the stand today. She's talking more. I think every day it just drew more and more people in because, like you said, it's a train wreck. What on earth would she have talked about for 18 days? I don't know, but I can't. I, I didn't watch the whole trial back then, and I cannot bring myself to watch the entire 18 days. Nope. Before. Sorry, guys. Nope. Not going to do it. <laughs> no way, because I would just lose my marbles with her talking. Like, Oh, you know who I actually I feel the worst for in this case? Hmm. The court reporter. <laughs> oh, God, yeah, oh, yes. right? Like, ugh. They have to type up everything that she says. <laughs> like, it's just word vomit. 18 days of word vomit. Oh, <laughs> that's awful. This poor court reporter lady having to type as <laughs> fast <laughs> as possible and having to type <laughs> nonsense for a month of nonsense. I hope they gave her a raise. Uh- it reminds me of like, you know, I'm, I'm seeing her typing and like eventually it just ends up being like The Shining where it's like, oh, work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. You know, like just constant, the same thing because it's just absurdity what she's saying. So it doesn't even matter what she's saying. You know? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh my God. This kiss case, man. This case. God bless. <sighs> 
All right, guys. Well, we're going to get into a little bit about the closing argument and the verdict and stuff when we come back from this commercial break. Don't go anywhere. The Good Wives will be right back. Lucky Land Casino asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kids' PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. With Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. <gasps> no, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. This episode has been sponsored by the Oliphant Institute. The Good Wives have been actively taking criminal justice courses at Oliphant Institute. Our good friend Stephen David Lampley, who is one of our regular guests on our YouTube channel Murder by Design, is a 24-year retired SVU detective and the founder of the Institute. Stephen himself teaches each class and they are no longer than an hour. They're super informative and very interesting. And you can't beat the price as each class only costs $20. If you're interested in learning more about serial killers, human decomposition, and many other criminal justice topics, but don't really care about a degree, then the Oliphant Institute is the right place for you. Head on over to OliphantInstitute.com. That's O-L-I-P-H-A-N-T Institute.com and get registered for a class today. Hey guys, it's me and I'm back to give you the recipe for our um, corn and black bean um, salad. So like I said, it's a very good salad. It's colorful and has an awesome lime dressing with it. So let's start with the ingredients. I'll just read the ingredients off and let you know what is in the recipe and kind of give you a little rundown of how the recipe runs. And um, you can go onto our Patreon account, get the full recipe with all the ingredients and how to cook it. So let's go ahead, let's start. We're going to need some fresh lime juice, garlic, cayenne pepper, we want to use frozen, fresh frozen kernel of corn. Um, you want to use a red bell pepper. You want to use green onions or like we call them scallions. Um, and you want to use some olive oil, salt, black beans. You want to make sure you get a, a 15 ounce can and you want to rinse and drain them. Uh, an avocado peeled and pitted, tomatoes, fresh cilantro, and that's it. That's our ingredients. So what we will do first is make sure that you um, cut up your veggies. So you're going to cut your, um, your, your garlic, your bell pepper, your onion, your uh, cilantro, and kind of keep them separate in different containers. Um, and then we'll go ahead and we'll start. You want to take the lime juice, the olive oil, olive oil, the garlic, salt, pepper, and you want to mix it in um, a little small jar with or something with a lid, you know, a, a top with a lid or a a, a glass container with a lid and you want to shake that those ingredients and mix that well because that's your lime juice a vinaigrette your yeah, dressing that is going to go over it so in a salad bowl you want to combine your beans your corn your avocado your cut up bell peppers 
you cut up tomatoes, you cut up green onions, put your cilantro, you want to shake your dressing good, pour it over, and then uh, mix the dressing. Make sure the dressing is over all the beans and the vegetables, and you're all done. It, it takes you longer to cut everything up and throw everything together, um, and that's basically it for the recipe. It's a very simple and easy recipe. Um, no heating up or anything like that is necessary. You just um, take everything straight, you know, straight and um, put it together. So let's head back to the good wives as they continue on and finish up the Jody Aris case. And don't forget to check on the Patreon account, our Patreon account, where we have all of our recipes listed. Um, and don't forget, if you have a recipe and you'd like to contact me, you can contact me at Cajun Mama Thai. That's C A J U N M O M M A T I E at gmail.com. Send me a note. Let me know what recipe you want me to uh, demonstrate or let me know which one you want me to talk about. And I'll be glad to um, have that on uh, one of our podcasts. So go ahead and let's head back to the good wives. And don't forget to contact me if you have a recipe. Y'all have a good day. Let's head back. another great recipe. For the full recipe that was shared tonight, join us at our exclusive membership club at www.patreon.com slash true crime wives. May 2nd, 2013, closing arguments begin after her, you know, in 18 days. Good God, I still can't get over it. Anyway, so Juan Martinez delivered his closing argument. He called Jody a sophisticated liar, a manipulator, and a cold-blooded killer who premeditated Travis's murder. He said she had killed Travis three times over when reminding the jury that Travis had been stabbed almost 30 times had his throat slit from ear to ear and was shot in the head. He again focused on the violence and brutality that Travis suffered at the hands of Jody, being stabbed in the back over and over again while posing no threat to Jody despite what she had testified. He said Jody Arias deserved to be sentenced to death. I, 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 if there was ever a case for it, like, man, well, and so this is, you know, when we have our interview with Kirk that you'll hear, you know, and we talked about it this past week uh, with the uh, Epstein and Maxwell case as well mm-hmm. about, you know, the role of defense attorneys um, and that, you know, they don't agree with and they don't condone the behavior of the defendant. It's just their job to save their life and re- right. you know, defend the Constitution. And what I really right. liked when we talked about with Kirk um, what is the current practice of the death penalty and uh, the way it is mm-hmm. carried out in certain states in terms of the medical usage. And we had a really good discussion right. about that. So I definitely encourage you guys to listen to that interview. Um, right. And so that next day after uh, the prosecution uh, rests their case, our friend Kirk Nermy delivers his closing argument. Knowing all that we know from our interview with Kirk, the approach he took isn't surprising at all anymore. And keep in mind that when dealing with a death penalty case, someone deserves Sometimes a defense attorney's goal is not that guilt, a not guilty verdict, but it's just saving the client's life. Right, and I like, and like we said, upholding the Constitution of the United States. And I, when we talked with him and Carlos about Epstein um, live the other day on our YouTube channel, Murder by Design, and also over on Facebook, we've been broadcasting both of them. But most of our lives, we've been broadcasting both on Facebook and uh, YouTube, and. You know, they talked about, they, they talked in great length, both sides, you know, both prosecution and defense talked about the fact of 
that they're both just upholding the Constitution of the United States, you know, so um, it really put into perspective a lot about what a defense attorney is really doing, you know, everyone has a right to a fair trial, I don't even give a shit how crazy they are, and, you know, how awful they are, they deserve a fair trial, you know, and um, it, it really did, and after speaking with Kirk earlier in the times that we've spoken with him since and then speaking with him yesterday it is really um put into perspective for me what defense attorneys are are really dealing with you know mm -hmm. so but um so Kirk bluntly told the jury that they didn't need to like Jody Arias he wanted them to put their personal feelings for her aside and be impartial he basically said that Jody Arias committed a crime in the heat of the moment and therefore her crime was manslaughter and she didn't deserve the death penalty. He told the jury that nine days out of 10, he didn't like Jody Arias, but the prosecution objected to his statement and the jury was told to disregard it. And you know what we talked about in the beginning, we expected Kirk to not be such a great guy. And this right. is one of the things that made me think that way in the beginning, because I remember back then hearing that and I was like, well, wow, that, that's kind of sucky for her lawyer to say, like, I don't like the girl at all, but her lawyer is not supposed to say, tell the jury he doesn't like her. But now I understand it completely. Like Jody Arias is an unlikable person when you hear right. the entire story. And he knew mm -hmm. that this entire jury was sitting there like, oh, we don't like this girl. This, this girl is horrible. And right. he knew that he had to like let them know, like, you know what? I don't like her ass either, but it's not about if we like her. This right. is what it's about, you know? So I yeah. understand it so much better now where it, back then I was like, well, he's a real douche for that. And now I'm like, this guy is amazing. And, and it, it's, right. you know, don't judge a book by its cover because mm -hmm. you, you're really mm -hmm. surprised at what's inside. And I know with Kirk, right. it was a huge surprise. Right. The jury deliberated for a few days. And on May 8th, 2013, Jody Arias was found guilty of the premeditated murder of Travis Alexander. All 12 jury members agreed that Arias was guilty of first degree murder, and seven of them agreed that she was guilty of felony murder, which is a murder that's committed during the commission of another felony. And the verdict brought cheers from outside of the courtroom. People were going crazy, and inside the courtroom was a lot of smiling and a lot of tears from Travis's family. Right. Right. I mean, right. The thing is, is like any time a trial uh, verdict is announced, um, neither side is happy. You know, mm -hmm. family members of the victim, you know, they're not like, yes, you got what you deserved. It's like, oh, my God, thank God this is over. Yeah. You know, right. Some sort of justice was served, but we still lost our loved one. Right. Um, but this is where that, yeah. that doesn't happen, you know? Um, so they feel like they've got this victory, right? You know, they've gotten, okay, it's closed. We're done. We can go on. But the aggravation phase begins on May 15th, 2013, and was the part of the trial where the prosecution had to convince the jury that jury that Jody Arias was eligible for the death penalty. And for them to determine this, the prosecution needed to prove that the murder was cruel, heinous, or depraved. And their only witness was the medical examiner who performed Travis's autopsy. Martinez showed photos of Travis's body and the crime scene. And after only three hours of deliberating, the jury determined that Jody Arias was eligible for the death penalty. So then the next day, May 16th, the penalty phase began. And this is the phase where Travis Alexander's family gave their victim impact statements to convince the, jo the jury that Jody should be sentenced to death. Um, but, you know, it just, I don't know. Victim impact statements to me are one of the most tragic parts of Absolutely. trials. Because you get to mm -hmm. hear from, you know, family members, mm -hmm. friends, mm -hmm. neighbors, who have been, just in, co-workers who have been impacted by the crime. And um, right. it's, it's really tragic, especially when people are close. So even uh, like in this community, not only is it his family and friends, but people of his religious community and, you know, sharing that deep faith. Lucky Land Casino, asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car, before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. 
Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. ChumbaCasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Forward, prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Um, so it's very, very tragic. And it's just like um, when we watched the press conference of Gannon Stauk um, when they found his body and listening to his mm-hmm. mom and dad talk, mm-hmm. uh, just mm-hmm. bawling. Right. Um, right. But so right after Jody was found guilty, she had told reporters that she wanted to receive the death penalty. But on May 21st, that changed. Jody gave her elocution in which she pleaded with a jury to give her a life sentence instead of the death penalty. She said she had changed her mind because she didn't want to bring any more pain to her family. And you, the, family- you know, the, the yeah, the family that she accused of abusing her. Yeah. OK. <laughs> no more pain for them. Uh, and Jody showed the jury a t-shirt with the word survivor across the front. Yeah, this, oh, this, this one pissed part, me off. Yes. Oh, it just pisses me off. It's like, I, you know, it's like the moment that I think that I'm the most pissed off with her. And then I'm like, oh yeah, wait a minute. What about that? That, that makes me even more mad. Oh, wait, wait, what about that? <laughs> she said that she would sell the shirts and donate the money to victims of domestic abuse. Can you... Can you even imagine how Travis's family is feeling with her holding up this shirt, shirt portraying herself as a freaking survivor of domestic violence? I am surprised that his sister did not like come over that freaking barrier and just freaking throttle her, just throttle her. I, what a freaking bitch move! Just well, it's, it's so oh, sick. Like, just and, again, gross. and again, it rubs the nose of actual mm-hmm. victims in the dirt. Because we, mm-hmm. everybody knows, Jody, that you are not a domestic survivor. People who actually go through that, you know, everybody has respect and care and love for them. And you're making light of this situation. Because if the jury and the court had, and the investigators had actually thought you were a domestic abuse victim and this was out of, you know, a pure, you know, he attacked you and you defended yourself or you've been through so much that you just snapped, guess what? they would have let you off with a better plea deal, a deal in general. So a lot of times we've seen that, you know, they get a few months in jail or slap on the wrist or probation or, you know, manslaughter charge, you know, five to 10 years. Not death penalty, Jody. That's because they believe that you did not do this out of defense. Oh, and it gets better, guys. So she also says that while she is in, if they if they sentence her to a life in prison sentence instead of the death penalty, that she's going to go ahead and continue to donate her hair to the Locks of Love Foundation. And it is an organization that accepts donations of hair to use for wigs for sick children. I, 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 like, is there no sacred thing with this woman? Like, is nothing. there nothing, nothing that she will not stoop to doing? I, uh, <laughs> well, so I mean, she, at least with this, like, I do feel, and we've had these conversations before, that I think the people who are in prison, you know, should be pretty, I don't want to say, like, you know, um, ab- not abused but or manipulated, but I feel like they should be made to do certain things, like prisoners who die healthily of, you know, natural causes. Like, I feel like they should be made to donate their organs. I I understand, but this is not that. This is not that. This is not, oh, you're, you know, we're giving back to charity because of da-da-da or whatever, or it's part of a program that they're working, you know, to be better. No, no. She's using this shit as a way to manipulate the freaking jurors. Like, she's manipulated everyone her entire freaking life. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, it's like, it's like the people that, you know, make the deals with God. Like, please, if you, if you spare my, my loved one, then you can take me, you know, and, and that's what this is like. It's like yeah. this, or or if you do this, then I'll do this. God, right? No, no, you don't get to make a bargain for your freaking life after you took someone else's by saying, "Oh, I'm gonna do a good thing by donating my hair to Lux of Love." Oh, yeah. For for me, it's you. kind of like 
don't take my life because I help sick children. Yes. And if you take yes. my life, who's going to help the children? Right. <laughs> right. Uh, I, I'm helping the children. Yeah. That, that's the kind Look, of I don't want you I'm anywhere near my, my sick child. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I do not but, want them get, picking any manipulative things up from you. Maybe Gypsy Rose Blanchard met her at one point in time. Who knows? <laughs> That's where she got the hair from. <laughs> right? Jody Arias donated the hair and made Gypsy even worse. Who knows? <laughs> well, that night, Jody gave an interview to several media outlets. And when sharing her thoughts on the jury, Jody said, Whatever they come back with, I will have to deal with it. I have no other choice. And her thoughts about the guilty verdict included, it felt like a huge sense of of unreality. I felt betrayed, actually, by the jury. I was hoping they would see things for what they are. I felt really awful for my family and what they were thinking. Um, I think the jury saw things for exactly what they were. Exactly (laughs) for what they were. But... Even though they had no questions of Jody's guilt, the jurors could not agree on whether or not she should get the death penalty. And on May 23rd, 2013, the judge declared a mistrial for the penalty phase. That just pisses me off. Uh, that's upsetting. This, it is. And it feel, it's like the, the victory that the, the family felt like they were having, you know, that, they, that this was going to be done and over with. Was Cut just short. Huge wishes she ain't right the hell out from underneath them like you know yeah, no, it wasn't bad enough right it wasn't bad enough that you freaking you know took my 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 loved one from me and that you trashed him completely and said the worst of the worst things about him and got up on the stand and lied for 18 fucking days and you know did all these things but now the jury can't decide on on the penalty phase so you know now we got to do it all over again like it, and see, I didn't know, like, I always thought that the judge, like, like determined that. I mean, I thought by the count, then the judge determined the sentencing in most cases. Um, I did not know that there was, a, there was a situation where jurors, like, actually decided on the sentencing. Because I don't think that, I, I truly don't think that that's a good idea at all. The sentencing? All all. No, I, I don't think that that should be put in the jury's hands. Like, I, well, it's I one think thing it's for them the to return... Right. I just think it's a one thing for them to return a verdict and say, yes, okay, we think she's guilty of first degree murder, but I don't think that they should have to be shouldered with the burden of determining whether or not that's life in prison or the death penalty. I think that should be the judge because what else is the judge there for, you know, other than to listen to objections, you know? Well, and I think, so we've seen this in other trials too, where, you know, um, And I'll say you're going to hear about it later on, but it was in like the Scott Peterson trial, you know, there were several alternate jurors that were brought on and they all had personal, you know, stories that they identified with uh, the victim and Mm. that led them to influence their decisions in the case and seek for the death penalty, not and if the judge had uh, made that decision, I don't believe he would have gotten the death penalty. I think it would have been more of a life in prison situation. Right. So um, it can be go either way. I, I agree. I don't. I just don't think putting that weight on people, this twelve pe- random people, is is fair. Responsible. I, I, no, I just don't think they should have that responsibility. The, a judge, a judge goes just by the letter of the law. You know, it's like, okay, this is it. I've heard everything. I go, I'm going by the letter of the law. And based on this, 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 and this thing, then that qualifies for death penalty. But no, based on this, 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 and this, that's not death penalty. You know, right? Like, like there should be like a, you know, for one murder and mm-hmm. uh, a rob. So if two felonies committed at the same time, you know life right. without ability of parole more than right. two years you know life without parole the and- heinous and the heinousness of a crime can determine you know right i, like, I, I so, mean in some okay, states it's structure so it's equal right. i think that's I mean, a big thing is that it's the right. equality for yeah. law perpetrators because when it's juries it's all individual it's not based on you know the law it's right. what the jurors right. feelings are and right and asking 12 people to decide that all together that's that's going to be pretty damn near hard you know like people are just people are unreliable and like you said it's emotional for them it's not the law they don't know the laws they don't know exactly what constitutes one thing over another they don't know what premeditation really means you know um and that one second can be premeditation they don't they don't have that kind of information they're just going by what they're feeling and and if you've got some you know 
woman who's a bleeding heart or, or a guy who just can't, sees her as his, like, you know, a little girl and he can't do it. That, that, that is, that is dangerous. I, I really feel like that's not cool. So, you know, it, it so this ends up being a mistrial, you know, so now they gotta, they gotta do this again. It is again. Don't go anywhere. The good wives will be right back. So you often hear NCS Good Wives sipping a glass of wine. And one of our favorite wine clubs is California Wine Club. California Wine Club only works with small wineries and they hand select two bottles of wine each month and ship them straight to your door. Now you don't even have to go to the liquor store to have a sip of bubbly with us. How cool is that? We absolutely love hearing from our listeners, and we'd like to invite you to send us a question for us to answer or a case you'd like us to cover. You can drop us an email at goodwivesdish at gmail.com, and we might feature it in one of our next episodes and give you a shout out. Right now, we are also hosting our Hashtag Love Wins Scholarship Fund. If you're a college-age student who would like to enter, send us a 30-second video telling us about how you lead with love. Email your entry to us with a little bio about yourself and your educational goals. And if you'd like to learn more about our hashtag Love Wins campaign for peace, merchandise, or don donation details, go check out our informational video on youtube.com slash murder by design. We look forward to hearing from you. On October 21st, 2014, a new trial began for Jody's sentencing. And in December, they took a break for the holidays and then court came back into session in January 2015. So testimony continued through January and into February. And on February 12th, the jury started their deliberations and they continued deliberating for the next couple of weeks. But on March 2nd, Judge Stevens got word from the jury that they were deadlocked. They yeah. couldn't come to a unanimous decision. And this prompted Jody's lawyers to request a mistrial, which Judge Sherry Stevens denied. What well, she did do. Go ahead, sorry. Wait, wait, wait. You know what? Well, because I want to make it sure people understand. So it's not a complete new trial. It's not like the whole thing, and we got to go through 18 more days of Jody up there spewing shit. Oh, it's yeah, not the that. Sentencing, yeah, so sentencing it's a different retrial. thing. So it's a, it's a sentencing retrial, which means that they take it. So all the evidence that was there and presented in the first trial is given as that is fact. Everything is there. That's it. And they're only hearing testimony towards whether or not it's the death penalty or the the not death penalty you know life yes. in prison um so that's all they're hearing so i and i feel like that's kind of a bad thing too because now you've got 12 new people who may or may not understand all of that if all they're doing is either watching a video or reading the facts of whatever they're being you know told that i feel like that lessens the impact that this is going to have on this jury too right because right, they're not going to be there for this right they weren't there to listen to jody spew for 18 days, days yes. right right and, and reading something on a piece of paper and actually hearing a person say it two totally different things well and watching it on a movie tape versus watching it live different right things. right Absolutely. Absolutely. So, okay. So go ahead with what now, now you can tell everybody what Sherry Stevens did. <laughs> <laughs> well, Judge Stevens, she now reads some more instructions to the jury and she sends them back and tells them that they have to continue deliberating. But just three days later on March 5th, she had no choice but to declare another mistrial because there was one juror out of the 12 that was not in favor of giving, the jo giving Jody the death penalty, and that was not changing. There, there was no way they were coming to an agreement with that one person. Lucky Land Casino, asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? <sighs> Ooh, a book club. <sighs> Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. Ch -ch 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 -chumba. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Ch -ch 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 
ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Full work limited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Right. See, uh, this, again, we don't know about that one person, but was that one person a victim of domestic violence? Violence? Right. Were they right. one person totally opposed to the death penalty? I actually think um, I saw the interview with the with this juror. Like there was a couple of jurors that came forward in one of the specials that I watched, and he, if it, if it's who I think it was, and, and I'm pretty sure that's who he was. It was an older man, and he just said he just couldn't. He just couldn't see putting her to death. He just couldn't do it because he didn't feel that it was right to take one life for another. And, you know, and I was like, oh, okay, I get that. But that's not what you're being asked to decide, sir. It's not your decision as, you know, it's a death penalty case and you don't get to just be like, well, I don't want to take one life for another because of my own personal views. What does the law say? And again, this is another reason why you don't put this into the hands of jurors. You leave it in the hands of a, of a well seasoned, you know, experienced judge who had to have been a lawyer to be a judge, you know, for many, many years, they have to be a lawyer, then they become a judge. So they know the letter of the law very, very well. Asking 12 random people and grandpas like, well, she reminds me of my granddaughter. I, I can't put my granddaughter to death, you know, like, uh, 100%. Yeah, yeah. So this takes the death penalty off the table and it left the remaining decision to judge Stevens and she could either sentence Jody to life without parole or life with the possibility of parole after 25 years. And so on April 13th, 2015, Judge Stevens sentenced Jody to a life sentence without the possibility of parole. And before she was sentenced, Jody showed remorse for what um, I think maybe was the first time she said, to this day, I can't believe that I was capable of doing something that terrible. I'm truly disgusted and repulsed with myself. I'm horrified because of what I did, and I wish there was some way I could take it back. And in June 2015, restitution hearing was held, and Jody was ordered to pay $30,000 to Travis's Alec, Travis Alexander's siblings. But I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, yeah, it seems like she's take, she's remorseful there, but I don't think so. No. I think it was a, I think that was a plea again to the judge to be like, oh, well, okay, it didn't work for me to hold up the survivor thing and it didn't work for da 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 and blah, blah, blah. So maybe if I say that, oh, I can't believe I did this, I'm totally disgusted with myself. Like that doesn't sound really remorseful. That's some like bullshit that she's just putting out there to say, so the judge will make maybe take pity on her and there might be some possibility that she can leave prison. Or like, oh, I've learned my lesson. Officer. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Bull crap. Manipulative. Man I swear. She is like, you know, kissing cousins with certain other people that we know. <sighs> so it is important to note that during this trial, there were several requests for a mistrial and Jody's attorneys wanted out. Those are some of the things that we touch on in our interview with Kirk. And you'll hear that in the bonus episode. It's definitely a perspective you are going to want to hear. It may change how you feel about the defensive side of things. Yeah. I mean, Kirk was denied being being let out. Like, he asked for it. And they were like, nope, sorry, nope, you're stuck bye. with that bitch. <laughs> you know? So, ugh. Well, the prosecutor in Jody's trial, Juan Martinez, was known as one of the best. He was a top death penalty prosecutor with several victories under his belt, but he was accused of a lot of inappropriate things. So Martinez was accused of misconduct in six of his death penalty cases. Since Jody's conviction, Martinez has been accused by several women of inappropriate sexual behavior and misconduct. It's alleged that at work, female co-workers would hide in the bathroom to void Martinez and his sexual advances. And in 2017, lawyers for Jody's appeal filed a complaint to bar against to the bar against Martinez. In this complaint, they accused him of having sexual relationships with two bloggers and a member of the media who allegedly gave Martinez a lot of favorable coverage because of their relationships with him. Everyone involved denies these allegations, although it is also alleged that Martinez had an inappropriate relationship with a juror and attempted to get, be, get information for her from her about the other jurors. Oh, geez. So very gross, very disturbing. It reminds me again, the lawyer for Casey Anthony. 
that defense yeah, but lawyer. This is the prosecutor, though. Well, you know, I, like, I know, but still, like, but Jody or not Jody, but Casey like showed up to the her defense yes. attorney's office naked and running around the halls naked, like weird. allegedly, <laughs> allegedly, allegedly. And, then, and so, between 2015 and 2018, Martinez had six bar complaints against him. All of them were dismissed. And this is really interesting, considering Kirk was disbarred after only one bar complaint was filed against him, but Martinez mm-hmm. gets six. And right. uh, the complaint against Kirk was for publishing his book about the trial, and he was disbarred because he published this book about what he experienced. Um, and Martinez also published a book about the trial and had a bar complaint filed against him for it, and that complaint was dismissed. So, you know, Kirk does the same thing as uh, Martinez and Kirk gets disbarred, but Martinez doesn't. I already have an issue with that. He has been now for the, yes. for these allegations. So, yes. um, well, I mean, he, he agreed to it. Like he just took a plea agreement to get out of it and, and yeah. took the disbarment, you know, um, which, but you know what though? I mean, in this case, like, okay, I get the, the girls and the women at his, at his work. Okay. If that's true, then that's terrible. And that's awful. But anything that Jody says about it, like, oh, you know, or, or, or her, you know, her little lawyers that stuck around have said about it of like, oh, he was, he was having inappropriate conversations with bloggers. You know what? I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't believe it. So like, I, I don't even put any truth into what is being said on the behalf of Jody Arias, like yeah. at all. Now, if the, the ladies that work in his office, those are true statements, then yeah, I mean, obviously that's terrible. And, you know, I, I would never want to have women that have to hide in the bathroom to stay away from a guy that they work with. That's awful. But you know, so he got away for a long time with some pretty brazen shit. And in 2005, he compared a Jewish defense attorney to Hitler. The Arizona Court of Appeals described the, comp- the comparison as reprehensible, but Martinez still didn't face any consequences for it. And in 2018, the county prosecutor's office reprimanded Martinez for his inappropriate and unprofessional conduct toward, two fe- toward female law clerks. And so last year, the state bar of Arizona filed a formal complaint against Juan Martinez, and he was moved from prosecuting first-degree murder cases to the Auto Theft Bureau. Wow, what a oh, demotion. <laughs> what a demotion. And then in February of this year, Juan Martinez was placed on paid leave, and on February 21st, he was actually fired from the Maricopa County um, Attorney's Office, and he agreed to be disbarred in July. So really up to date, you know, this where we're at now. But right. so th- this is, the, you know, the craziest thing is that both lead attorneys, defense and prosecution, yep. have been disbarred. Have been disbarred. You know, that both of them are kicking themselves for the day that the Jody Arias case came across their fucking desk. 100%. Yeah. While all of this is happening, Jody was appealing her conviction on the grounds that she was denied a fair trial. So Jody claimed that because of the media coverage and the misconduct by Juan Martinez, she was deprived of a fair trial and an impartial jury. But on March 24th, the Arizona Court of Appeals upheld Jody's conviction and life sentence. They basically said that even though Martinez had engaged in misconduct, in misconduct it didn't change the evidence against her, which proved her guilt, and she didn't deserve a new trial because of it. They also said that Jody didn't show that the jury's ability to be impartial or her defense team's ability to give her an adequate defense was affected due to the media coverage and publicity. So as of today, Jody Arias is serving a life sentence and she's in the Lumley unit in Goodyear, Arizona. I was going to say, let me pull out my trash can and puke over here for her sake. (laughs) She's deprived of a fair trial. All right, I'm fine now, guys. (laughs) I'm wondering how like her current lawyers didn't try to say, well, both of the attorneys are disbarred. Did that did they not, you know, follow procedure? Maybe we should redo this on the grounds that neither side had effective counsel. Well, I think the count, one of the attorneys that's still with her is Kirk Nurmi's former Uh-oh. partner with this. So Got I it. don't think that would be right because then she would be basically saying that she didn't do her job because yeah. of Kirk. So I don't, I don't yeah. think that's I think the point. wording, I think some of the wording that was used by the court of appeals was that the evidence against her was so overwhelming right. that it really didn't matter that nah, Martinez nah. had engaged in misconduct or anything else because it was clear that she was guilty of premeditated murder. Right. based on the evidence that they saw. 
Unbelievable. Don't go anywhere. The Good Wives will be right back. Every great podcast needs a great website. Currently, our mother company, Mad Ginger Entertainment, is building their website using Bluehost. Bluehost is one of the best and most affordable web hosting platforms available. Plans start as low as $2.95 a month, and you can even integrate it with WordPress. So if you need your own website or affordable web hosting, grab our discount link in the description and get your podcast a bigger presence online at low, low costs. Hey guys, it's me, Cajun Mama Ty. I have the Zodigo music playing in the background. That's Clifton Shinya. He's playing Squeeze Box Boogie on his accordion and his band's playing. So hold it down just a little so I can talk for a minute here, okay? So today I have a French word for you. And this French word is actually very near and dear to my heart. My grandfather was one of these. It's called a traiteur. A traiteur is a faith healer or a treater. So, but I'm gonna call him a treater because that's what we call them nowadays. Instead of calling them a traiteur, we call them treaters. So I'm gonna kind of give you a little rundown of it, of the history of what a treater is and where they came from and stuff. So here in Louisiana, the term traiteur describes a man or a woman who practices what is sometimes called faith healing. A treater is normally a native Creole healer or a traditional healer from a French-speaking Homa tribe whose primary method of treatment involves laying their hands on people. So it's important that it's an important part in the Creole folklore religion that a treater uses Catholic prayers and medical uh, meta- medical remedies. Um, so they, they can treat a variety of different ailments. Some of the things that a traitor treats would be an earache, a toothache, a wart, uh, tumors, uh, angina or chest pain, bleeding um in the past long long time ago a treater was used instead of going to the doctor but now we live in a remote area where physicians are more readily available and now you finding more that the people go to the doctor more but you still have some people who still use faith healers and treaters the thing that's important to know about if you ever meet or you go to a treater or a treaters, their um, gifts are normally from God and therefore they refuse any type of payment or exchange of money um, for their service. So it's a very old tradition it's a tradition that's dying out, unfortunately, and there are fi- very few that still exist. Traditionally, the rituals of the tr- traditionally the ritual of a treater is passed down from the opposite sex. So, if a man is a treater and he he before he dies, he has to pass down his Um, his healing faith healing powers to someone so he has to pass that down to a woman and then the woman has to pass it down to a man Um, so that's the tradition 
But I have seen things like that happen that they don't have somebody who wants to take on the responsibility of of being that faith healer, that treater, that it could be the same sex. Um, so it's it's often it often, especially in this day and age, it happens that way. But the most important things, they will accept gifts, but they will not accept money. They will not accept money. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about my childhood. My great grandfather, my father's father's father, my great grandfather was a treater and spoke only French. We communicated well when we were young. He understood, they understood English, but they only spoke French. But um, I remember as a child, people coming to him to be treated. And we'd wake up the next day and there would be sacks of oysters on the um, underneath the porch or there would be an ice chest of shrimp, or there would be a bushel of crabs, or there would be something underneath the, uh, you know, on the front porch or underneath the carport for whatever he did, he did for them. So my grandfather, my great grandfather, um, unfortunately passed away when I was 13 And before he passed away, he did pass his, um, his faith healing power, his faith healing power to his oldest daughter, um, and which she is my great aunt. And currently my great aunt is in the nursing home and has not, she's very, she's in her early eighties and has not found anyone to, um, transfer her transfer her power like to to give her power to um or to give her information to so that the to continue the treatment the the treater treatment on in our family and i have been very praying about this very much and continuing to pray about it and i ask you guys to pray for me as well as I am thinking about taking on this, this, um, she has asked me to, to take on it. So, um, it's a time of discernment for me and I am excited, but I'm scared. So, uh, that's my story about being a treater. And one day maybe I'll be called a treater. Let's head back to the good wives. Guys, don't forget, if you have any questions, concerns, or anything you want to know about the Cajun community, shoot me over an email at CajunMamaTie, that's C-A-J-U-N-M-O-M-M-A-T-I-E, at gmail.com. You can also go on the Patreon account, account and all, our, all my information is there to get in touch with me and send me an email. Let's head back to the good wives as they're wrapping up the Jody Arias case. Thanks. Y'all have a good day. Bonsoir, mon ami. That was definitely a long, wild journey, and you can actually wrap it all up with our bonus interview with Kirk Nurmi. To the brutal murder of Travis Alexander and the murder trial that followed became an international sensation. As disturbing as it is, Sex and violence are always attention grabbing and the more sensational it is, the more people want to see it. But that doesn't take away from the tragic loss of Travis Alexander and the future he should have had. The actions that Jody took on June 4th, 2008 devastated so many people and changed so many lives forever, including her own. That case was just a nightmare. What a nightmare. And we're about to we're about to get into another nightmare. Um, 
that Colleen seems, I, you know, Colleen, you are an intelligent, wonderful person who generally is pretty smart. I just don't see how you see this the way you see this. But apparently you're, I don't know, maybe I'm you're gung -ho leading about on this. this one. I think maybe your heart is leading on this one and not your head because I just, even the things that you've said to me about this, this next trial that we're going to be talking about, I still don't see what you see. I don't know. but Well, the thing is, is I'm not guys. leading with my heart. I'm leading with the science on this one. Uh, but I still think that you're leading with your heart, sweetheart. I, I, I don't think the science proves what you think the science proves. I feel like I'm in, I'm in The Princess Bride where it's like, you keep using that word. I do not think it means what you think it means. <laughs> like, that's what I think with you. Because I'm telling you, I, I just don't know anyone else. I literally have never met another person that's like, oh, yeah, Scott Peterson? No, nah, he's not guilty. I've never met another person, not one, not a single other person. Well, if you're out there I, and listen, all I have to say is, Colleen, when when you give your side, I want some straight up Nancy Grace bombshells through the whole episode. Oh, you right? can bet your ass I have got it. <laughs> if you're listening to this and you have some speculation on Scott Peterson, I would love for you to reach out at Good Wives Dish and give me your take on this. I already know that I'm in the way minority on this, but if there are other people out there like me who think, well, I don't know if, you know, he really is guilty or even if he did it, did he deserve the death penalty and come on over. And if you know bigger people that are involved in this case or uh, out there, um, like Nancy, I would really like to talk to you about this case. Are you asking someone else to fight your battle for you, Holly? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I am. That's because I've got you quaking in your boots. No, because I, th I think I'm not just the only one out there. And I'd like to get more people on my side because I'm literally in a lowly corner of, <laughs> of abuse. You, are you saying that I've got you against the ropes and it's round 12? <laughs> no, I'm saying you've got 10 over there and I've got one over here and I'd like to even it out a little bit. All right, guys. So what we're talking about is our head to head on Scott Peterson. So how we're going to set this up, I'm going to explain it to you now. It's going to be four total um, episodes. The first episode is we're going to all come together, me, Christina, Colleen, and Tori, and we're going to just talk the actual information that's out there, um, just kind of break down the case for you in what this, it was presented, how it was, just like we've done with other cases, you know, all the other cases we've done. We're just going to grab all the facts that are, or the alleged facts, you know, that are out there and present the actual information that uh, you guys can, you know, all agree on that this is what is out in the public eye. And then the next episode is going to be Colleen, and she is going to give a very sad attempt for it. I'm going to say, cause I, I, I know, I know you're going to try your hardest, Colleen. I just know you are. And it's going to be, I mean, you're great. So it's going to be great, but I don't think you're going to win a whole lot of brownie points, love. Um, so guys, please don't, don't judge her off of this one case because I, 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 I mean, she's one of my best friends and I love her to death, but I don't know how in her mind she's doing this. And then the third one will be me doing my side of, um, of what I, you know, the things that I believe that, that prove his guilt. And then on the fourth night, we'll all return together. And Christina, who is the one person, you know, that's like, okay, I could be swayed, maybe, will go ahead and uh, join us that evening to, to, after hearing both sides of this story, go ahead and tell us what she thinks. And then we'll, you know, kind of just discuss it a little bit more of, of why we all think the different things and, you know, kind of duke it out just for the last night. Right there and that will be our season finale of season two of the good wife's guide to true crime so you're not going to want to miss all that thanks so much for tuning in and dishing true crime with the good wives don't forget to join our patreon member club to get the full recipe shared tonight inside documents and pictures from the case bonus mini podcast episodes live youtube discussion and an exclusive invitation to our discussion group on facebook and get some amazing good wives merch Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at True Crime Wives. And for more inside information, check us out on YouTube at Murder by Design, where we're currently talking about a few different true crime cases from bullying murders to serial killers. We dish it all. Have a good one from the Good Wives, serving up true crime, one dish at a time.
Are you struggling to lose weight and keep it off? Tired of wasting time and money on starvation diets that lead to more frustration and stress? If there was a weight loss solution that could actually work for you, would you try it? Then head to golo.com. I'm Steve. I lost 138 pounds in nine months on Golo. I'm Amber. I've lost 128 pounds with Golo taking release. If you're ready to take back control of your life, head to golo.com now and see how Golo can work for you. That's G-O-L-O.com. My sleep is way better. My inflammation has gone way down. Golo saved my life. I was way overweight. That's what sent me down the path. I wanted to make sure and live for my kid. I have literally tried everything. I was on the verge of getting gastric bypass surgery, and I saw the Golo commercial, and it was the last thing I tried because it worked. Join over 2 million people who have found a better way to lose weight with Golo. Your healthier and happier life begins at Golo.com. That's G-O-L-O.com. Again, G-O-L-O.com. Are you struggling to lose weight and keep it off? Tired of wasting time and money on starvation diets that lead to more frustration and stress? If there was a weight loss solution that could actually work for you, would you try it? Then head to golo.com. I'm Steve. I lost 138 pounds in nine months on Golo. I'm Amber. I've lost 128 pounds with Golo. If you're ready to take back control of your life, head to golo.com now and see how Golo can work for you. That's golo.com. My sleep is way better. My inflammation has gone way down. Golo saved my life. I was way overweight. That's what sent me down the path. I wanted to make sure and live for my kid. I have literally tried everything. I was on the verge of getting gastric bypass surgery, and I saw the Golo commercial, and it was the last thing I tried because it worked. Join over 2 million people who found a better way to lose weight with Golo. Your healthier and happier life begins at golo.com. That's G-O-L-O dot com. Again, G-O-L-O dot com.